The Anti-Defamation League says the number of anti-Semitic attacks is rising nationwide here in the North Texas, Oklahoma region as well. One high profile example came in January when a gunman held four people hostage inside of a Colleyville synagogue. Since then, companies in North Texas have wanted to find out more about anti-Semitism and discuss it with their employees. Among the organizations, the Dallas Cowboys. In a story you'll see only on CBS 11, our Jack Fink spoke with one of the team's legends who is Jewish. It's the fullback, third and one eye right. Dalton you know center. Brad Sham as the voice of the Dallas Cowboys. He's going to give it to Elliott up the middle and the fullback plunge, a la Daryl Johnston. <laughs> but now this broadcasting icon has something else to say on behalf of the team. Like so many other people on a Saturday morning in January, Sham heard about the British national who is holding four hostages at gunpoint inside Congregation Beth Israel Synagogue in Colleyville all while the morning Shabbat service was being live streamed. Why would anyone be surprised? Other than it's in your backyard, um, no one's immune. While Rabbi Charlie Citron Walker, Jeffrey Cohen, and the two other hostages escaped unharmed physically, the incident exposed an old familiar anti-Semitic trope. During interviews with CBS 11, the rabbi and Cohen said the gunman told them he targeted the synagogue because he thought Jews controlled everything in society and as a result could help gain the release of a prisoner held in Fort Worth. One thing that Jews have learned through centuries and millennia, you got to keep going because the attacks won't stop. They've never stopped. Days later, Sham said the head of the Cowboys Human Resources Department called him and their corporate attorney, both who are Jewish. The Cowboys wanted to add to their organization's discussions with employees about diversity, equity and inclusion and tackle the topic of anti-Semitism. And they said, we, we need to talk about this. We don't know enough about what went on, what goes on. We, we need to know more. Will you help us? Education is a key. Sham said he called Cheryl Drazen, the vice president of the Central Division of the Anti-Defamation League, or ADL. But I was absolutely elated that they, like many other corporate leaders in our community, were bringing anti-Semitism into their DEI conversations. The Cowboys organized a conference call with the Anti-Defamation League and a local rabbi to talk about anti-Semitism. And a large number of employees voluntarily joined the call to learn more about it. Uh, there were uh, 250 employees of the organization who had, were not players, coaches, or administrators on the call because they embrace and almost, not almost, they promote diversity. It's not like there's 20% of their employees who are Jewish. I mean, there might be three or four. Uh, and that would include me, and I'm not a full-time employee of the organization. That internal employee conversation was held in March and wasn't publicized. So they didn't do it for show. They did it for real. That, to me, is the most important part. The Cowboys aren't alone. Since the hostage situation at the synagogue, Drazen says dozens of other companies in North Texas have reached out to her so they, too, could include anti-Semitism in their conversations with their employees. She says Texas Instruments, Toyota, and American Airlines had those same conversations with employees even before Colleyville. But the realization that anti-Semitism needs to be part of that curriculum, that it is the original anti-bias, and that people need to understand what it is, whether it impacts a small or large part of their workforce or their customer base. How important is this to you personally? Oh, it's pretty vital personally. My uh, rabbi has advised that the best way to, for Jews to fight anti-Semitism on a daily basis is to be openly Jewish. In Frisco, Jack Fink, CBS 11 News.